Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. My name is Jane Applegath, a for former award-winning stockbroker, television producer, script writer, yoga instructor, and serial entrepreneur, now founder of the Epic Vision Zone. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your greatest epic story so that you can live at the speed of your most audacious dreams, a place where your life roars with purpose, prosperity, and love. Here at the Epic Vision Zone, we bring you some of the world's most influential people to inspire you to hit the go button on your epic life. A big thank you to everyone for being here today. William Jennings Bryan wrote, destiny is not a matter of chance, it is a matter of choice. In his best-selling co-authored new book, Unleash Your Future, award-winning scientist, author, visionary, and personal and business improvement specialist, Mark Boldazar shows us the powerful five-step formula to transform your dreams into reality through the law of attraction. His best known for leading Fortune 500 companies as well as individual seven-figure entrepreneurs to realize their full potential, Mark has been featured in publications from the Los Angeles Tribune to Top Talent Magazine. He has shared the stage with living legends that include Dennis Waitley, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, John Ashroff, and many more. His co-authored co book has been endorsed by Jack Canfield, and he was the first guest on Jack's show talking about success. With over 30 years experience as a scientist and technical leader working for multiple global corporations, Mark has been awarded a U.S. patent for an innovation in the semiconductor industry. In 2019, Mark co-founded the New Science of Success with Takra Shilor, who is the co-author of Unleash Your Future. Mark's mission in life is to change the world for the better one thought at a time. His work and the focus of the new science of success is to teach others how to unleash their future one thought at a time through the intentional programming of the law of attraction. When he isn't teaching people how to move from settling to success through the law of attraction, he can be found running or biking through the beautiful Lancaster County of Pennsylvania. Welcome, Mark. I am so excited to have you here today and for joining us on the Epic Vision Zone. Thank you, Jane. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here and I'm really looking forward to the conversation. Well, likewise. So let's delve in because you have a fascinating background with your science and now moving into uh, the law of attraction. Um, your renowned work in the scientific area and showing others how to manifest success through the law of attraction. Those two are seem so polar opposite, but tell us how that transition manifested for you. Well, I have always been inquisitive and always wanted to know how things work, which is why I became a scientist. And, um, and as I was finding success in science, as I went further on in my career, you get bogged down in a lot of things, politics, many things. And I was finding myself becoming less and less happy. Well, at the same time, I was very energized about the possibilities of the law of attraction. But when I first came to study the law of attraction, watching things like The Secret, reading the book, Think and Grow Rich, what was clear to me is something was missing. The, you know, it's like, hey, I think this is plausible, probably possible, probably real, but okay, how do you use it? It's not like think and sit on your couch and, you know, let it, let everything take its course. So I started experimenting with smaller things because I really wanted to try to figure out how it worked in a way that I could teach it to others, not just myself. I mean, that was my secret to success in my technical career is figuring out how things work that you could practically apply. But there was one key moment that really pushed me in the, you know, to, to take it to another level. You know, I was, as I said, as particularly as I got towards the end of my corporate career, I, I was finding myself that I was miserably successful, right? I was living someone else's dream, this corporate world six-figure salary, but I would come home unhappy, 
grumpy, but we always had dinner as a family. So my wife and my two daughters, and one night my daughter said, hey, at dinner, dad, if you're so unhappy, why don't you just leave and go do what you want to do? And I'm like, I first started to rattle off college, um, healthcare, mortgage. Then I stopped and said, you know what? She's right. And so I went from the smaller experiments to saying, okay, that's what I'm really going to target intentionally targeting, finding my, my way out to what I love. And then over the next couple of years, I started writing in, in the book and I started programming the universe to what I wanted. And, I left and became a consultant and just hit the ground running with almost, you know, and success just, just took off. It wasn't like I left and I had to rebuild. It was sort of like I was already halfway to the moon. Wow. That's incredible. So of course now this is uh, your passion and sharing this opportunity and the potential that's there for others. So it's it's interesting that it was your daughter who who turned the light bulb on for you because there we go as younger people we we tend to do that it's like well just change it you know because there, that we do get conformed at, at at a very young age but there's still that that openness and that's so exciting um, and so glad that she said that to you <laughs> so. So Unleash Your, I, I, I want to delve into your book now. You've got Unleash Your Future. I love the title, by the way. You've written that there are thousands of books on the law of attraction, which I agree there are so many out there. And yet only 92% of respondents were dissatisfied with the results that they were getting. So give us an idea why you co-authored the book Unleash the unleash your future and why it's so different. Well, I started working with the car. Like she has a small publishing company and she was really helping me kind of develop the book, but also kind of work on, um, you know, really me tapping into this more intuitive spiritual side where the information of the book could flow in. But what's different about this book is, the missing pieces for me that I mentioned earlier were that there's, there was no how to, but I wanted it to be how to in a way at which there could be measurements. Right. So where, um, I know in my business world, you can't improve what you don't measure. So when you can take the understanding of the law and then bring measurement to it, break it down into component parts, you can get your arms around it and work with it. All the other books that have been out there, uh, they generally treat this law almost as this kind of mystical, magical something that you try to tap into when it's something you want, but it's not all encompassing. So you're using it if I want to manifest money or a relationship or a career, but all the other things that are happening in my life aren't happening because of that. So that is where I think the issue comes in and why people get dissatisfied. It's an all or nothing. So you have to know that you, if it works, you're creating it all or you're creating nothing. Right. Yes. Bring it in from the science point of view. Um, I love that. That's that there's measurements and we'll get into that a little later in the interview, but it, it completely makes sense. And I agree. Uh, when I first saw the movie, the secret, I had the same intention that I could just put out the thought and, fantastic things would happen. <laughs> it's like, why isn't this working? <laughs> if only it were that simple. Yeah, exactly. And, and I was like, I'm sure I wasn't alone. And this is why <clears throat> you said that 92% of people have been dissatisfied because there is some science behind this. Oh, wow. There's a lot of science behind this. So we'll delve into that, but you have sabotaging limitations. What limitations sabotage our ability to achieve what we want? Well, I'm not sure we have enough time in the day to go through all that because in reality, we are burdened with limitations starting very early on in our lives, right? We're, we're told we're not this, we're not that, you should do this, you should do that, don't do this. So we carry all those forward. And, you know, as we sit here today, um, it's rare that we challenge where they came from and, and why we've accepted them and why are they true? 
Like, you know, I used to think, well, you know, as a scientist, they're not the kind of people that go out and start their own business. They're more kind of salespeople or business people or whatever. So like I limited myself, just that's one simple example. But all of these other things that we've um, allowed, and I call this identity theft. Our identity has been hacked from very early on by well-meaning people, our parents, coaches, teachers, that tell us things thinking for our own good, right? that um, we, we should um, protect ourselves, And so that creates all these limitations and they come in so many forms. Anytime you say, hey, I would do this, but whatever comes after that but are all your, are your limitations and you're probably only scratching the surface. So they're, they're very numerous. But where I'm coming to say is, you know, you mentioned in the earlier about like, you know, destiny is a choice continuing to allow these limitations to hold you back as a choice too. You can let them go. It just takes effort. Right. Absolutely. And I think one of the key issues there is being aware that you do have the limitations because a lot of us are, well, not many of us are walking around unconscious. Like we aren't even aware that we are working within our box of limitations because of things that have happened in our previous, you know, our childhood, in our culture, in our education system. So yes, that's that's a key to, um, you know, on to being aware first that we are working within that box of limitations and then stepping into this practice and and what unfolds before you and the possibilities that's that's really exciting and and that's where we need to go now this next part i found fascinating because the law of attraction is often described as a magnetic attraction and you attract into your life experiences that are like your thoughts that's what we've heard often but you say that the law of attraction acts as a reality tuner. I love that. Explain that for us and how it plays into your radio analogy. Yeah, I think this magnetic attraction never resonated with me right from the beginning. Because in science, like does not attract like opposites attract. I mean, I have some magnets here that I oftentimes use, like if you put like poles together, they repel. So really the mechanism that I have is that everything is energy and that your thoughts are one form of energy and they're at a frequency, a fast moving frequency. So they're not coalesced into matter. And that's how you program. So your thought, your belief for that thought and your passion for it is like programming the universe. So it's like, putting a a floppy disk into a disk drive. And then the universe takes that and transforms that um, into your reality. So it tunes, it creates this like um, experience in the physical reality. It's so it's the matter is another form of energy. So, and these are very, these transformations of energy are very common. Like the electricity, when you flip on your switch, didn't start as electricity. It may have started as nuclear power or solar power or wind power or coal, coal fired uh, plant. So that, that transformation really is how, how things work. And so when you think about this, your programs, your mind, so what you're thinking about are like, you're beaming these radio signals out, right? So the one that you want to listen to, or in this case, experience in your life, you want the strongest signal out. So what you want is should be your strongest program. But again, we talked, you could step back and if you analyze and you become aware what's going on in your head, you can say, well, which radio station, what am I tuning to, right? What am I telling the universe I want? I mean, it's really simple, but that doesn't mean easy because you have to put some effort and you have to stop and think. And we like to just get into this robotic hamster wheel of life, that treadmill that we're always on. Yes. Absolutely. It's like you said, it's, e- it, 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 it's simple, but it's not easy because we are walking around unconscious. So we're not aware of our thoughts. We're not aware of, of what we're actually putting out there in the universe. And I know that when you, you do tune in, you tend to move through life with more grace. That's what I've felt. 
because you 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 you're not paying attention to the thoughts like you were before that were there um the 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 limitate the limiting thoughts uh you tend to let them go by the wayside uh when you get into this practice and i i call it a practice because i think that if we almost have to be aware every day of of what we're putting out into the universe um I want to delve in now to what you call the universal law of creation. You write that every significant discovery and innovation comes from a mind willing to think outside the box of what's normal, understood, and accepted. I love that, by the way. Such is the case with what you call the universal law of creation. Tell us about this law, because you don't call it necessarily the law of attraction you're calling it the law of creation well yeah I, and and i frame it that way because everything that occurs in our life we manifest we create comes from this law so it, when when you frame it as a law of creation it's active right you're the active creator co-creator with source god whatever however you describe or whatever you resonate with, right? So through this, this simple process, and this has been ancient, right? So you can go to ancient cultures, Eastern cultures, you can look in Christianity, just listen to the words of Christ describing this, it's done unto you as you believe, right? You know, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open, right? So again, because it's so simple, and we see this power that we can create, it almost is one of the barriers to it is like, well, how could it be so simple? Why shouldn't it be so complex, right? So we want to talk ourselves into, you know, why it should, you know, be, be it should be more complicated. And, you know, I, I really resonated Neil Donald Walsh's book, Conversations with God. He, he's having that same kind of conversation and God, you know, says, well, why would I make it complicated, right? I'd want everybody to be able to come to it. So, but unfortunately what I see is in its simplicity, it actually stops people from accepting it, which is sad. Right, yes. And I love that you said that creation is active because yes. that is the key, is that you have to be, you're the conduit basically. So it has to start with you. So it, it, the attraction means you're waiting for something. At least this is the way I feel. You're waiting for me, something to come well. to you, right? Whereas creation is your, you're the the source, and you're you're the conduit that needs to put out the frequency, the energy signals to to connect with what out, what else is out there. I yes, yeah, I can see that. Accept you have to accept it all. And that's why in the beginning of the book, we started with the five stages of grief because you're going to grieve the fact that you're not a victim anymore. Oh, it was so much easier when I was a victim. Like I could only take responsibility for what was good, right? And so you have to let that go. And when you come to accept yourself as the creator, it can be obviously stressful or scary, but when you understand then how it works, you said earlier you can kind of glide through life more gracefully. I, I totally agree. It's less stress because now you know how it's created. You can, you know, put aside the things you don't want and and advantage and make what you do want more probable. Yes, absolutely. I know people people do enjoy their victimhood, which is a shame. If only they yes. knew that there's so much more, but. I can't say that I would grieve letting go of victimhood, but I guess maybe some people would. I just I find that like an no, oxymoron. I, 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 yes, I, I agree, but it's like it, it's there's there's comfort in that, right? Like oh, where, okay. in, in this crazy kind of way, it's like I'm not responsible, right? And so I can. It's easier for me to complain about all these things than it is for me to kind of try and have it not work out and try again, right? I, that, so that's what I say, the grief. Really, it's sort of like with my daughters. They want all the perks of being an adult, but not necessarily all those responsibilities to come along with it, right? And it's the same thing. Right, absolutely. It's accepting that you have to change. 
and and you're right letting letting go of what's comfortable and and getting out into that 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 realm that like you said the responsibility of of what comes with that change or those those accolades well this is a perfect segue because change and uncertainty seem to be all around us these days and can you share with us some tips to help listeners navigate these unprecedented times with greater ease and grace? Well, you know, first of all, the only constant thing in life is change, right? And so change is a process. And so in the book, I lay out an equation for change, which was first developed um, in the 1960s, um, really in terms of helping um, in business consulting, right? But I think it really applies to life. And when you can see it as an equation and what's really driving change there, you know, for change to occur, you there's the product of if you multiplied your dissatisfaction with the current state, multiplied by a vision for a new state, multiplied by this first steps of a plan of how you're going to get there have to be greater than the resistance for change to occur. So when you can break it down that way and you're saying, hey, I'm navigating all these changes around me. You can look for well, what are all my resistances? How satisfied am I? Do I even have a, you know, everything's happening around me, but do I have a vision of what I want to have happen? Do I have a plan? Right? So all of these things, again, an equation that you can break down, you can look, you know, how strong is your dissatisfaction or how strong is your vision? You can put some numbers to it. You can, again, become in the driver's seat and be the active change agent. You don't have to be the passenger. Yes, I could see that being the driver. I, uh, that's in my opening statement. That's what I, I put people in the driver's seat because, uh, and that's a difficult thing, but you're, you're absolutely right. I love that you said that, you know, what the dissatisfaction and how, how much is that weighing you down? Because it's the ha cup half full or half empty. Perspective is everything, right? Uh, some Some... Some people are saying this is a, a wonderful time of, of transition, that there's, there's, yes, it's difficult, um, but there's things that will come through this and out of this that will make us better, stronger, um, and there'll be lots of opportunity as well. So, um, you know, some people view it as a very exciting time. Uh, and, and all I say is stay away from the news and you will be fine. <laughs> well, I think that's right. I mean, I, so many things, what you feed your mind affects so much of how you view the, the world and how you view what you're programming the universe and change all of those things are, you know, it's not just the news. If you look at a lot of the television programming out there and the kind of things that you could watch and you could fill your mind with so many of these dystopian show all these things it's like i don't want those thoughts in my mind you're absolutely right oh that was fabulous mark what you feed your mind it's we're always you know there's so much about weight loss and what we feed our bodies but no one has come up and said what are you feeding your mind wow yeah and it's that's being a real very option. conscious I'm, I'm very conscious of that there are just things i won't I'm like, I look at that and I watch, you know, my kids may watch and my wife may be watching something. I'm like, I don't want any part of that. It just, and yeah. this also then looks at the way you feed your mind. If you then think about everything you say or do, you are in communicating, you are feeding someone else's mind. And when you think about that, now you become more responsible with your words, particularly if you're talking to the, your loved ones, your children, your spouse, extended family, friends. Yes, absolutely. That is, boy, that, that is, you could really delve into that. Like we need to put our minds on a diet. <laughs> you know, I don't, like, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, I think people would be really in tune with that. They go, wow, that's, what do you mean? Um, the, you know, for me, I'm like you, I'm very curious. I go, what does that mean? I think I need to learn about that, but you know, it's, it's true. Oh my gosh. I, I, that's, I love that. Um, thank you. I think that's brilliant. Put our minds on a diet, a healthy diet. <laughs> a healthy so the diet, si absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. The, the new science of success formula. Briefly, uh, there, I know this, you delve into this in detail in the book and it's fabulous, but if you could briefly explain to the audience what this new science of success formula is and how it works. Yeah, it, so the, the first three components or steps of the formula is really how we program the universe. And it's not just thought, right? So there's the thought. There's this passion and energy for the thought, which can be positive or negative. The thought could be something we don't want and the energy could be fear or worry. And then the belief that of whether that's personally possible for us, not belief in the law, right? So you could say, hey, I want to manifest a million dollars, but I don't believe it. So right away, your program's off, right? So, and each one of the sides of that, those three components, and I show it as a triangle. And it's like, you can put the triangle in a floppy disk in the computer. Um, each you can not magnitude one to 10, either one of those sides. And then for all your thoughts and you can score them and, and kind of make a visual picture of which ones are stronger. Then, as I said earlier, this law of creations, um, it's a participation sport. It's action is that four step. And I prefer intuitive based action because that's driving you off, tapping into knowledge outside of yourself, moving you in a new direction versus taking actions based on your past experiences, because if you do that, you're more likely to just repeat the same kind of results that you've always had. And the fifth one, we, we call it keep the faith, but it's, it's really meaning just like the law of gravity, if this is the law, it has to be working all the time. So it can't be, well, I'm not really getting what I want, so I think I'll just throw that law. Right? You have to know that you have to keep going and keep going and keep going. You, we unfortunately live in this world where we want instant gratification and instant manifestation. And I think that's part of a big part of what stands in people's way. There's too much stuff out there in this world where they're promising that, which it just doesn't work that way. So you got to keep the faith. It's like, you know, tortoise in the hair, you keep taking steps, doing the right things versus racing off for this quick fix that you, you're not going to win. It's not going to work. Right. It's, it's the practice. It's, it's like we, yes. you know, we need to be aware and, and do it every day. And then again, it does go back to what are you feeding your mind? But that's, that's the practice, right? You just want to wake up every day. Um, you know, it's like you said, you would talk, you'd see your, your wife and your daughters watching a program and you're like, no, I don't want anything to do with that. Uh, and that's part of your practice because you don't want to feed your mind, whatever it, the, that whatever they're watching because it's not healthy or, you know, right. it doesn't keep you in that space that you want to be in. So absolutely. I could see that. So could you just name off those five steps so that our audience could um, hear you say them? Yes. So the first three are think about it as a triangle and that's how you're programming the universe. It's the thought that you're focused on and we have many thoughts. So the more you focus on something you want, the stronger that thought is being. But it's got to be combined with your passion or energy for it, right? You could be programming the universe with somebody else's thought that you want to be a doctor or whatever, but you don't really have much passion or energy for it. And then the third part of that is your belief that it's personally possible for you, right? Because you can't manifest anything you don't believe is possible for you. The law is unlimited. The only way, it can, the only person that can limit it is you. And then once you program, what are the actions that you take? Even if you're taking one small step slightly in a new direction, right? It opens up this horizon. You're allowing the universe to present you new and different possibilities versus just going on autopilot again. You know, so often it's, it's like you make a New Year's resolution, then you just two days later, you go off, keep doing the same things, right? You want to take these actions and intuitive based actions, that four step are important. And then that fifth one is you just have to have they keep the faith and the confidence in the law, just like the law of gravity. You're not worried about every day, whether you're going to float off the earth. Don't, don't, don't concern yourself that the law, well, maybe the law doesn't work. It works. You just got to, you just got to make it work for you. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. That was, that was wonderful. Um, and speaking of making small changes, you have a wonderful story in your book, which I'd love for you to share with 
our audience because often what happens is we like I was saying to you earlier I watched the film uh you know the law of attraction and I would be thinking this is what I want they would be huge aspirations and nothing would happen um but you say to take small steps towards that and give us an example of what that would be or how we could practice this in a small way to see that it does work I I think you know, oftentimes these small steps are things like parking spaces, right? Now I get a little more specific because, hey, I could be focused. I'm going to go to the mall and I want a parking space, but I don't really have a lot of passion or energy for it because oftentimes, I mean, I could walk a mile into the store if I needed to, right? And but think about it at Christmas. People are like they're really passionate about parking spaces at the mall. So it's like, I, I need this parking space. I'm going to get it. I believe it'll be there, you know, because I think where the small step is you want to, you don't want to extend past what you believe is possible. If you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to manifest $500,000. You're probably well past what you believe. Not that it's not possible, but you don't believe it's possible for you. So that's where the small steps come in. And that's why I use the analogy of the game of baseball. Baseball was the same game whether you're playing at a T-ball or in the major leagues. And what I say is like, if you're like, I'm six years old, I go and I play T-ball, I hit off the team, say, this game's great. Tomorrow, I'm going to the major leagues. I'm going to step in the batter's box against the pitcher throwing 95 mile an hour fastball. First pitch, I'm going to swing and hit a home run. It's not going to happen, right? And it's just, that's so often what people come to the law of attraction. They're, they're like, they're, they, they get it. They're, they're at the T-ball stage and they want a major league manifestation and it doesn't work that way. You Once you know how it works, you have to take the small steps, practice, build your confidence and the skills. Those guys who get to the major leagues or become professional in any sport are the ones who put the effort in, understand the game, understand the work that needs to be put in. And in this case, everybody can become a major league manifester intentionally, right? You got to put that effort in. And one thing is you can say is, you're already at one level of major league manifester because everything you're experiencing, you're manifesting. You're just doing it unconsciously and getting most of the time. You're getting what you're programming. Unfortunately, you're programming most of the time what you don't want. Yes, uh, I can see that. That um, I I could see the triangle there um, when you you talked about the the major league, the baseball, and also the parking space, because you're when you have the thought that I want that parking space, but like you said, during the, the high season of the holidays, people are really passionate about getting that space. So there's the energy, yes. right? Uh, I mean, you, you associate this story and, and bring it back to when you have something that you want to attract. So you're really passionate about getting that space and there's your energy. That's the driving force. And then you believe that you're going to get it. And I, I love that story. You, I, the baseball story is great too, but the park, well, especially for women, because we're at the park, you know, we're in the mall looking for parking. Well, space, yeah, you, right? yeah, yes, yes, I get. And, and I, I could just envision myself going, Oh, that's why I got that parking space. Cause I would be doing that. I would have the thought and I'd be driving. And I'd be like, I'm going to get that parking space. I know I'm going to find it. And boom, there it would be, but you don't associate. But you can believe the- that that's going to occur as well. Right. It's like, cause you maybe you've, if it's happened before. So when you're intentionally right. doing it, it's at a level at which you can believe it's not extended beyond your belief. And then the more that you do those, your belief muscle stretches and grows so you can you can expand out right absolutely i love it uh thank you that was a uh, and i have another um analogy here that i read in your book that i really resonated with and it's the status quo and lego um you have a wonderful story and it, it's it's you you call it the status quo you call it the law of en- entropy did i say that right Yes, it's the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so the law of entropy, or as you say, the status quo and Lego, tell us that story. Yeah, the, um, you know, so as I said, everything uh, is energy. 
and our, our universe is built on certain fundamental laws, and the laws of thermodynamics are the fundamental laws of physics. And the second law, the law of entropy, really talks about a system. People are systems, societies, groups are systems seeks to be in its lowest energy state. That means it wants to be scattered. It doesn't want to expend energy, right? So I, when I think about this, I go to the status quo. As a person, our lowest energy state is not thinking about what we do, going on autopilot, the, the status quo. To do anything else requires energy. And the example of the Legos are, I think, that, that really brings this to life. If you have Legos in a container, and, you know, many children, you know, parents out there, you have children, you see they, they have this box of Legos. They can scatter them all over the floor. How long does that take? Almost no time. And when they're scattered all over the floor, they're completely disordered, disorganized. Now, if you want to build something with the Legos, or even if you just want to put them back in the box, you have to expend energy to put them back in the box. And we don't really want to do that. We prefer to be in a scattered state. And anybody who has had their their children dump their toys out or the Legos all over the floor, knows that it takes energy for them to put them back in the box because inevitably your children do not want to clean up or put things away because it takes that energy. We prefer to be in that scattered state. So this is like everything we talked earlier about being conscious and intentional. It takes energy. And we're, the, we're wired in the universe to not want to do it. So we have to recognize that and get the activation energy to get over to home. Yes, that was a great analogy, Mark. I love that because, yes, we're walking around in a scattered state, which is unconsciousness. And it's so much more comfortable to be there because doing anything other than that creates energy or, or needs energy and effort. Um, but also it's being aware that we're walking around in that scattered state. So uh yeah your your stories and analogies were spot on i i just smiled when i was reading it because you're saying about dumping them out and i'm going okay that makes sense then you say well now it's going to take energy to build or to put them back and i go oh my gosh that's why kids don't want to pick up their toys exactly. <laughs> takes effort you know but it's yeah. nothing to dump them out and that's yeah absolutely well I'm going to switch gears here. In your book, you write that energy is everything. And we were just talking about that with the Lego analogy. And quoting you, you say, a fire can't start without a spark. Tell us about this and the tips to ignite our own spark. Yeah, so um, if I oftentimes talk about programming triangle of thought, feeling, and belief, like the fire triangle. So if you're going to create a fire, you know, say it's getting cool here in the Northeast, so you have a campfire at night, uh, you need a couple, you need three things for a fire. You need fuel, which is your firewood. You need oxygen, which is in the air. And then you need energy with that, you know. So for me, if I don't have a match, I, I can't rub two sticks together to create a spark. So when we think about our um, programming triangle that spark it could be a feeling right you could be hey I, I want this million dollars but i'm not really passionate for it and you not really ask yourself the whys to get down what do you really want if it's a million dollars chances are you want something much deeper right which so you don't have that spark so if 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 you don't have that spark just keep asking why till it gets down to what you really want so for me it wasn't when I left the corporate world, it wasn't about money. It wasn't about, as I kept saying, why, why, why? It really came down freedom. I wanted the freedom mm -hmm. to do what I wanted, yeah. to work with who I wanted. So the, the program that I put out to the universe was this freedom. And the way I, I could feel it every day was I would envision that first day when I was working out on my own, where I, when I woke up first Monday, I didn't have to go into the office or I could basically just do what I wanted, you know, and sit outside, have a cup of coffee. And I remember that first Monday after I went out on my own, it was a beautiful October morning, sat outside with a cup of coffee and that feeling that that thought and feeling and belief that that could be my life when it manifested. And, and that, that was just such a such satisfaction in that. 
So you have to find that. Now, the other part that can also be the spark is this belief. You could have a passion for something in the thought, but you don't have the spark of belief that it's possible mm -hmm. for you. And that's why I said you just have to bring bring your boundaries in until you can feel, yeah, I could believe that. Right. So any one of those pieces missing in the program, like if it's a zero, if I multiply three numbers together and one of them is zero, the product of that equation is zero. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yes. So that is really profound what you just said in reference to the money, because I would say nine times out of 10, maybe even 10 out of 10, that most people want financial freedom and, but bringing it down to why is so crucial. It's, it's not, you know, okay, so why do you want that? And for you, it was freedom. And it's funny because that's exactly how I feel as well. I mean, I was, you know, we all, I mean, I, I believe all of us want to live with ease and, you know, we need the finances to do that. And what it boils down to though, is freedom, freedom to do what you, not just do what you like every day, but freedom to um, maybe donate to your favorite charities, freedom to inspire and influence the world, freedom to write your book, freedom to. So yes, I, I found that very profound that you, you know, if you if, say your, your goal or your, your want is for that millions of dollars, then keep asking yourself why, because that's what's going to ignite the feeling, which is the energy. Um, yeah, Absolutely. I, I, the number yeah. is arbitrary, right? So right. it's really hard to get passionate over. Yeah, we, as you say, we need money to pay for all the things and, and to live. And when it's really about, hey, I want that financial freedom that gives me this other freedom, the number, it, it, what I've found is the no, money shows up, takes care of things, right? And it's not about, there, there, there's not a number. I'm not living to a bank account number, which is, as I said, it, it's, to, for me, it's hard to get passionate about that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's hard to get passionate about that. So what you want to do is bring it down to something that ignites your passion and therein lies yeah. the energy and, you know, the, the thought that you want to have to ignite that passion. Oh yeah. yes. I, that, that was great. Thank you so much. Well, What's math got to do with the law of attraction? The universe um, only recognizes thoughts. And, and, and I know that you have uh, put this together very succinctly in your book. And I, I find it fascinating. Tell our audience what that entails. Yeah, so there's the concept in math of absolute value. An absolute value is a minus 10 and a plus 10 in absolute value are both 10. The plus and the minus gets taken away. It's really just a magnitude. So the law of attraction works in the same way. It's, it just puts absolute value signs on whatever it is you're thinking about. So if you're thinking about, hey, I'm going to lose my job and I'm fearful of all this, and that, that's what you're running in your head, it's like, and you're saying, oh, by the way, I don't want this, which is like a minus sign. It just wipes that off and you just keep running in your mind, you losing your job or whatever, right? In the same way, if it's like, oh, I got this great job and I can't wait and all this, it's the same thing. That That's a plus sign, but it takes it, it just, but in either case, you're running the experience through your mind and living it, right? So the universe is just responding to that. The You saying, oh, by the way, I don't want that, although I've just spent like, 24 hours just thinking about it nonstop, this fear and worry about something, it, it just drops the I don't want off. You just you just played it over and over and over again. So that's what you're telling the universe you want. Exactly. Yes. I don't, you you said in, in your book, it, the universe doesn't recognize I don't want. What it sees yes. is the job. It, it basically, it just seems you know, that you're, you're when anytime you're thinking about something you don't want, you're playing that experience in your life over and over again and saying, I'm so afraid this is going to happen. Right. And then subconsciously, hey, I don't want that. But you're 
vividly throwing out the experience, this negative experience that you don't want. Right. I mean, if someone talks to you and says, hey, you know, I'm so worried about this or whatever, like they're vividly explaining to you this experience. And now, by the way, I'm just hoping that doesn't happen. Well, that's <laughs> if you put the numbers, to, that's probably the strongest program you're running to the universe. It's good. It's just going to pick it up. And hey, it's like your radio signal. It's like oh, it's going to blast over. You know, that's what you're going to get. That's exactly it. And and that's why, you know, they say um, be careful of your not I, I i hate to say for people to be careful of their thoughts because you i get to i know understand it now but at the big this was years ago i'd be like well how can i be careful of my thoughts i have to shut down everything i mean i'm always you know you're always thinking i i got to the point where it's like i'm not allowed to think of anything but what you say is absolutely right um i'll give a story here uh my father was at breakfast with my sister and there was a little cherry tomatoes. And he was, he had no idea that he was doing this. And at the time I, I didn't know anything about the law of attraction. I mean, I was in my teens, but he said to my sister, now don't you put a fork in that tomato because it will get all over my white shirt. He was going to a business meeting. <laughs> he put it out there. The universe just heard him saying, it'll get all over my shirt, my white shirt. And sure enough, put the fork in there. And where did the tomato splatter to? Right to the center of his shirt. I mean, you couldn't have planned it. But I mean, it's instances like those, you know, if, if you can think back in your life and, and I'll never forget that because it was just like, it, it, it's funny after the point, but of course he was furious at the time. <laughs> But I'm, I, it happens and, and you've got daughters. So just, you know, see if anything like that happens. They'll say, now don't do that. I don't want that. And then the next thing you know, it happens, you know, but you're right because that's, that's the signal that you're emitting to the universe. And that's all the universe hears is like, I can't move now because I want to live in California, but I, I can't go there because I have so much responsibility, even though I want to go there. But, and all the universe hears is, well, you have responsibility here. You can't leave. Yeah. Yep. It, it takes some mind bending to, to understand that, but it's absolutely true. What you put out is it's, it's like, I've heard people say the universe always says yes. Absolutely. So and the other thing, yeah. because this be admit, another point here, I'll hear a lot of people say, well, the universe has your back. The universe, the universe, it, it doesn't have, I, I, I don't look at it that way. The universe just does what you ask it to. It, it, you program it, it delivers. It's just like a computer, right? If you garbage in, garbage out. It's not like the computer's not saying, well, no, I really think what they really meant in this program is this, so I'm going to do something else, right? So it, when we when we personify the universe, it brings in these qualities that then take that make it not reliable because we have so many people in our life that we've come across that aren't reliable, right? The universe is like a robot; just exp it's just responding. It responds just the same if you if you choose to be negative, it'll respond to that just as much as it'll choose to be positive. So I like it; it's non judgmental, right? <laughs> it just it just does yes exactly absolutely well that i i love this uh, and of course this is my wheelhouse mark so um, i really appreciate your book tell our audience about your consulting and your one-on-one -on -one training and how people can get in touch with you yeah so i just uh revamped my website markboldazar.com and both i have both a, a a little bit about my business consulting kind of side and also my my personal side and really i, I always encourage on both sides start with an assessment because you can't know you can't get to where you want to go unless you know where you're at so i have an assessment that's really about manifesting for the personal side and then i have assessment on the business side and i don't do anything cookie cutter i think all these programs hey i'm gonna have everybody i think whether you're in business or in your personal life, it's a unique journey. And what I look at, it's helpful to have a guide, someone that can, you can bounce things off of, Hey, did you think about this? Well, what about that? Hey, this assessment, maybe this points out where your strengths are. 
here's maybe where you want to develop. Hey, have you thought? I, I think that this so often is missing. Small businesses miss it because they just don't have enough people and they're always too busy trying to wear every hat. Personally, you're just thinking, man, I just I want the one-off thing that I think is going to manifest tomorrow and we really don't want to do the work. So I, 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 I encourage people to contact me, come to the website. Um, you can set up a free uh, discovery call with me there. You can email me at Mark at Mark You connect to me on the, on the website. I'm all about conversations and I'm also very intuitive. So in the conversation, I also, I, I pull information, not just from my physical intelligence, but also the way I tap in. And I, um, so I bring all that to the table when you talk to me. Wonderful. Yes. That's, that's, everyone should take advantage of, uh, at least a conversation with Mark, uh, that generous 15 minute consultation. Uh, and what do you hope people walk away with from your work? It's you have the power. You are the creator of your life, right? And what I hope you walk away with is that you accept the responsibility and start becoming conscious and intentional with it. Because if you don't, it still doesn't change the fact that you're the creator of your life. Yes, absolutely. Well, there you go. You've got the power. So tap into it. <laughs> what are you most excited about in your life right now, Mark? I'm, and I might get emotional because I'm most excited. Both of my daughters are in college and I'm most excited to see them unleashing their future, their best future, what they dream of. Right. Right. Um, and really thinking about as a parent, parenting with the law of attraction as a thought about hopefully stretching the, and expanding their world of possibilities as wide as my wife and I could. So that as they go out, it's watching them put it into practice. Now, they, mm -hmm. they aren't thinking in, in the way of, oh, yeah, I'm using the, what Dad talked about in the book. They will talk about it, right? And they'll hear them repeat things back that I know that it sunk in. Um, but to see them do it, because like, that, if that's the only thing that I was successful at in life, it's the most important one is to them to unleash their best future. Yes. Wow. That, that is powerful. You know, I had a thought that, do you ever think they would teach this in universities and colleges? I, it's because interesting. It would be so vital, so powerful. Don't you think? Well, there's a couple of interesting points there. One, my youngest daughter is a neuroscience major. So the wow. neuroscience side is really, this is going to like, hey, thoughts as energy and things that can be measured, all those things are going on, right? So at some point, this is going, it's just going to further and further develop. So yes, one day this power, it will be discovered in a much more, hey, the more concrete way that science likes to say, like, it will move from theoretical science to to more, hey, now I have the instrumentation to see and measure and do. So yes, I think that will occur. Um, but, you know, and the other thing too, it, it branches then over into the psychology side. And my oldest daughter's a social work major and uh, has taken a lot of psychology. And one day she said, she called me, and this is how I know it sinks in. She said, dad, the, my professor, he brought up the law of attraction today and he was sort of making fun of it or whatever. And I rose, raised my hand and I said, well, wait a second. You know, and she went on to explain to him how is my about the book and and he and they ended up having a nice dialogue about that. That's how I think it will occur, where people mm. are talking about it, not in its more woo kind of crazy way that it's out there, which does a disservice. And there are lots of other things in science that have their same kind of things going on. Right. It's not just the law of attraction. But when there can be this kind of debate and we start having the measures like in neuroscience and what's happening, it. it we're, we're moving that direction already. Yes. Oh my gosh. You, it would have been great to hear that conversation between her and her professor, you know, Yes. and yeah, but good for her, you know, to, to stand up and say, wait a minute, you know, this, this is, this, this isn't woo woo. It's just, you know, how you've interpreted it. And, exactly. and uh, that 
fabulous. Oh my gosh. And a neuroscience. Wow. Yeah. I love neuroscience. It's just a fascinating topic. Any last words, Mark, that you would like to share with our audience? I think if you could do one thing leaving after listening to this today is to stop and take inventory of what's going on in your mind, right? Just take the time to stop and look at what's happening and ask yourself, look, take the top three to five things that are in your head. Are they things you want or are they things you don't want? And then that's the first step of your journey to consciously and intentionally moving towards unleashing the future that you want. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I wish that everybody and hope that they do do that listening to this. And because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone, I have one last question. And that is, if your life were an epic story, what would the title be? From Settling to Success. Mm. For so long, of course. I settled, right? I mean, not even knowing it. Right. Well, I was a little bit better. Right. My, I'm better than where my parents were. Okay, well, I could have a worse job. This job's okay. This is always settling, right? And we don't have to settle. Yeah. And when, and this, the law of attraction shows you how to move from settling to success. Yes, absolutely. Perfect title. Well, you have to get that second book out now <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you again, Mark, for joining us here today and be sure to check Mark's website again at markboldazar.com where you can book once again, that 15 minute free discovery call and check out Mark's radio show, The Wizard's Way of Manifesting on LOARadioNetwork.com. You can also find Mark's contact information and more on the Epic Vision Zone bio pages. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jane Applegath. And don't forget that you can reach out to me at janeapplegath.com and grab your free download, The Keys to Your Dream. Looking forward to hearing from you. This has been the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dreams into epic success.